Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I am back with a new video and I'm super excited. I have teased this project a little bit over on my Instagram and I'm super excited to finally share it with you guys. I am doing a cute little dress for this video and actually it's a two-in-one project or like pattern I guess because right here you can actually see what I'm talking about, my sample, which just happened to work out pretty well. And I just made it a top. This is basically a pattern that you can use as a bustier top or you can make it a dress. So like both versions without changing anything, like literally you just don't put the skirt on. And I mean, this just looks really, really gorgeous if you ask me. And I'm super happy to show you how I made this. And obviously we're gonna make a dress out of it, not out of this one, but out of a green fabric, this one right here. So it's like a very matte green satin that just looks absolutely amazing. It's um, my favorite color if you, couldn't tell from what I'm wearing all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that there's much to say. Let's just get right into it. I prepared my bodice pattern pieces like so. As you can see, this is a very structural piece of fabric and that's not how the fabric actually is. Like I made it to be like that because I tried something out. Usually I would use the fabric, put interfacing on it, use interlining, put interfacing on the interlining and baste all of these layers together and call it a day. But this time I actually tried something new that I have in this way, never tried before. I used a material that allows you to fuse two fabrics together and therefore create a different feel or like a different structure to the fabric. If I show you the skirt, which I have done nothing to, you can see how flowy the material actually is in comparison to the bodice pieces that I have right here, which are like super structured. What I did for this is that I used my satin right here. Then I fused a normal cotton poplin, this material right here to the pattern, to the wrong side of the pattern, and then ironed another layer of interfacing onto this. And now I have this like almost soft shell-like material, which hopefully does well for the bodice with my lilac one in the background. The bodice is also very structural, s structurally sound, I guess. Uh, that's because of the fabric itself. It was way thicker, like the satin weave was just a thicker weave and therefore with interfacing and interlining, I did it the usual way for that garment. It just worked perfectly well and the bodice is very structured, but I wanted to try it with this fabric this way that I just showed you or that I just explained. So let's see how this works and if I can recommend this or if it's just not worth it and you just continue doing it the old fashioned way. So let's get started. Pretending like I cut this out right and did not in fact think the back was the front and the front was the back. You should not have a seam right here, but that's fine. We can live with it. It's barely visible, honestly. I just press it down and it's fine. So this is the front piece and that's the back. <laughs> Sadly, I don't have enough seam allowance here now. So I had to redraw my piece and I have to like um, sew on the pink line. <laughs> so don't do as I do. <laughs> Anyways, it's fine. Let's put the front and the side front pieces together. As per usual, you wanna put the bust seam right on top of each other. And then I just like to pin the bust notch and fix that in place. And then for matching these curves up, I'm going to cut into the seam allowance of the straighter piece like that. And now it's fairly easy to kind of bend the pieces into the correct shape and match them up. As you can see, it opens up basically. The seam allowance kind of opens up and now the stitching lines uh, fit together perfectly and you are able to stitch this very nicely into place and repeat it on the other side as well. To get a perfectly crisp seam right here, I'm going to cut out some triangles right here in the curve so that once I iron it open, it just lays nicer and it doesn't like overlap. And now to iron this, I'm gonna use my tailor's ham and I'm gonna iron the seam allowance open. I 
I actually found that cutting down the seam allowance to about three millimeters works way better because you prevent anything from showing through. So even though you cut into the seam allowance to make it lay openly, it nevertheless, depending on what fabric you're using obviously, but it still showed through with my fabric. So to me, it's just the better option to you know, cut down the seam allowance to three millimeters so that at least you have a continuous line and not just like zigzag. So that's that and this is what it looks like. I'm really happy and pleased with the result. So we can continue on with the back and then putting the bodice together and finishing it. Now for the back, we're gonna do more or less the same thing. So it also has two pieces and this very curved princess seam. And we're just gonna put the notch together and then cut towards the stitching line into the straighter piece right here and then just put both of these pieces together. Okay, so now that the back pieces are also done, ironed open and, you know, prepared nicely, we can go ahead and close the side seams because yes, we're gonna close the side seams before we put the sleeves in. It just works the best like that. So let's put right sides together and sew right here. Let's iron the seam open. Okay, the next thing that we're gonna do are the straps. We have a shelf strap and then a facing strap, which one is, you know, the thick one and then one's just like uh, what we put on the back side so that it looks all nice. We're just gonna put right sides together and then the longer curve right here, we're gonna match up all of the edges then the notch and everything and just sew at one centimeter. Once done with that, I'm going to understitch the seam, meaning that I'm going to put my seam allowance towards the facing and then closely to that fold line or the ditch of the seam, I'm gonna top stitch to keep the seam allowance, you know, towards the facing and that's just gonna make it way easier to iron the strap correctly. So after I pressed the uh, strap flat, I went ahead and also top stitched the uh, folded edge that's gonna sit towards the uh, neck, like very closely to that folded edge and also went into the seam allo allowance all around just to fix the facing onto the uh, strap itself, onto the shell and nothing's gonna move basically. And now with this prepared, we can put this onto our bodice. I prepared it on this side already. So basically what you want to do, the very, very sharp edge sits on the back piece and the 90 degree angle is for the front. So you're gonna put right sides together and match it up between the seam allowance here for the arm thigh and the notch, fix it in place. And here for the back, without twisting, you wanna put it Right here, you're also gonna find a notch there and you want to make sure that the stitching line here matches up. So you don't wanna put it like this. This way you're not gonna have it aligned with the arm side. It's gonna be like this. So you wanna have the stitching line, which is where your seam allowance ends, align with the stitching line here on the shell. And that way you're also going to match the notch that is right here. As you can see, it's gonna match up with the stitching line here as well. And now you can just sew it at one centimeter and fix everything in place. Now with the shell bodice completely done, we want to go ahead and just prepare the lining, which is exactly the same as the shell minus the straps. So we're just going to sew it all together the same way. And with that, we can go ahead and either put the lining on or continue with the skirt. I think I'm gonna do the skirt because then we don't have like this flap of lining in the way all the time when we put the skirt on as we still want to do like right sides together and stuff. So let's actually put these two pieces out of the way and continue with the skirt. You should have three pieces for the skirt 
which we're gonna put together first. So they have like this cutout right here, which is gonna sit here at the side. So you're gonna have a little gap right here, a little hole. So we're gonna put the side seam, which is the shorter side, together with the back. The back is not on fold, which is why we have two back pieces and one front piece. So let's sew this. I'm actually gonna do French seams as I'm too lazy to <laughs> re-thread my overlock in another color. So I'm gonna do French seams, put wrong sides together, sew at five millimeters and then flip it and sew right sides together. I'm gonna do the same for the other side. So let's actually finish the raw edge of the cutout right here and I want to do a baby rolled hem. So the first thing that I will be doing is to, to fold the edge here like super tiny fold like this and then just top stitch close to the edge and then that makes it super easy to fold it again and top stitch next to that fold line here again to make a, like this super tiny but very cute baby rolled hem. And I think I'm gonna do that for the hem as well so that everything is like ready to go and finished. So now with that done, we can go ahead and gather the top part. So also the cutout right here. So we want to gather this length down to fit in between here. Same to the back. We want to gather this length down to fit in between here and then on the other side as well. So we're gonna gather a bunch. Same to the cutout right here. We wanna gather it down two to two and a half times of that length, but that's very individual. Probably the best to just pin it on and then hold it to your body once it's gathered and not yet you know, knotted in place. So you can still change it if it doesn't fit perfectly. So that's what we're gonna do here. And I will be doing separate gathering stitches. So I will be gather this section separately because it is a given length that we have to gather it to. Same to the waistline of the back pieces and then here the cutout right here gets a separate gathering stitch because that has to be adjusted individually to your body and then this as well. Okay, so after a bit of back and forth, I pinned my top onto the skirt and put it on the on my dress form uh, just to see how the skirt falls because I did not sample that one. I just sampled the top because I thought honestly, well, the skirt is gonna be fine. Like it's simple. Well, it wasn't. <laughs> and I ended up inserting like, I would say one third of a circle to the front and the back. Obviously I already changed the pattern for you guys so that you don't have to do that as this is now basically my sample for this dress but that's fine <laughs> I managed to fix it so another thing that I wanted to point out is that I did the gathering stitch here for the cutout at 1.5 centimeters which is why I have like this little ruffle on top here which is gonna stay like that as well so now we can go ahead and attach the skirt to the bodice and I'm just gonna do that as per usual matching up the center front right here where you can see that I attached this triangle right there like this one third of a circle with like a nice and neat French seams. I don't know where I took that patience from. Usually I would be too stressed out to like work neatly and nicely when something like this happens and then I would just like do a quick overlock seam and probably the wrong color because I would not change the thread. <laughs> but I did it neat and nicely here, thank god. So now I can pin this on to sew it and as I said before it has to fit between the front dividing seam in the bodice and everything that's not gathered to size I'm just gonna gather under the machine and then the same to the back where you can also see that I added this triangle here
and I also already knotted off the gathering stitches there. That's what I also uh, did when I put it on the dress form. As I said before, you basically do that to your liking, however you want the cutout to sit, so you can gather it more for a higher sitting cutout or you can keep it like hanging lower basically uh, then you just gather it less and then you're just gonna have like a bigger hole that is whatever you want and whatever you feel comfortable with okay now that that's all pinned in place we're gonna go ahead and sew at one centimeter Okay, with the skirt now attached, we can go ahead and put the lining on top here. So we're gonna put right sides together. Make sure to put the straps inside of your bodice because the straps will not get lined. As you can see, it like just fits right on top there. So you just pin the neckline together. You're gonna leave the arms eye like as is, as we're just gonna use it to sew in the sleeves later and after i'm done sewing the neckline on i will also under stitch that seam as it lays better in the end we did that for the straps as well so let's sew the neckline and let's actually iron this so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the lining side I just quickly went ahead and top stitched the front neckline just to make everything look clean. Do not do that for the back though because we need to put the zipper in still. So if you want to also top stitch the back neckline, do that at the very, very end once the zipper is in and the dress is basically done. Speaking of finishing this dress, let's make the sleeves. So let's put this aside and grab the sleeve pattern pieces, which are right here. You're gonna find on your pattern piece a front and a back sleeve point in between which you have to gather the sleeve down to fit the arm's eye of your bodice. And that is exactly what we will be doing before we finish the hem of the sleeve, which is gonna get like two nice cute folds which is gonna make a really really cute shape so let's add the gathering stitches here so with the gathering seams now in place I want to go ahead and add the lines right here that I want to stitch like these ones right here obviously you're only gonna have one not these blue ones as I fixed some things with my pattern so what I want to do right here is just draw in the lines from the pattern onto my fabric here and I want to do that in a parallel way and now I can put a right sides together with the outer notches meeting and just sew down this line and I'm going to use this line right here the middle one as my full line so that I know that everything's parallel and then I'm stitching right on top of these two lines and I'm going to do the same for this before we hem the sleeve. You want to iron the folds towards the side seam of the sleeves and I'm just going to press down the fold line here and not press any higher as I want the sleeve to, you know, fold organically, like however it wants to lay. And this is what it's gonna look like from the right side. And I'm just gonna hem the sleeve by double folding five millimeters and top stitching. Now this can be a bit tricky right here, depending on your fabric, because you have so many layers here. You can always just do a stay stitch and then use that to easily fold twice. And this should be good enough to stitch at five millimeters and hem the sleeve. And let's iron this nicely like this. Now we can put a right sides together of the side seam, close this, I'm just gonna do a normal seam and overlock. You can obviously do a fringe seam if you want to, but it's not gonna be visible, so whatever you feel like. And with the side seam now ironed flat and towards the back of the sleeve, we can put it into our bodice. And as you can see, I already finished the other side, so I'm just gonna show you this side really quickly. So what I like to do is to match up all the points that I know 
are gonna go together. So the underarm seam, so the side seam basically, all layers go together. Here I am pinning the lining together with the shell fabric here. Now the back sleeve notch ends with the back dividing seam here. So we have to match all of that up and in between here as well. Due to like different fabrics, this can or might not stretch out a tiny bit more or less. As you can see right here, all of these have the same lengths, but it is on the bias, it's a curve, so they might, you know, not, not stretch the same or like lay the same throughout all of the layers. So just make them match up by just, you know, you can just stretch a little on it and you're good to go. The front notch ends right here in the seam where you put the strap in. I'm keeping my threads for the gathers like up. I'm not gonna pull them in somewhere because that's where we have to, you know, we have to gather in a second as well. And right here, same with the other side. They do not lay the same or stretch out the same. That's why you just have to make them lay at the same distance like this. And now the last point that we also know about is the shoulder point. So there is a notch in the sleeve right here. I marked it with a needle before gathering so that I can find it easier. That's a hack. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put it together with the shoulder notch in my strap, which is right here, more towards the back. And now I can go ahead and pull on the bobbin thread that I prepared earlier and gather the sleeve to size. And I like to do it with the sleeve already pinned in place because then I know exactly which distance I have to gather it to. And I don't have to use like rulers or anything. Like it is just very exact. And I don't know, it just seems faster to me than checking and measuring and, you know, knotting it in place and whatnot. So I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm gonna gather down the back as I can always adjust the front as that's where I gather. So I can see now that this is the length that I need and I can go ahead and adjust the gathers and just make everything even. And now I can move on to the front gathers, which conveniently is already the size that I need. So I can knot off the gathering seam with a double knot and cut this short. And now I can also adjust and even out the gathers here. You want to focus the most gathers around the shoulder point in front and back. And then, you know, it gradually gets less and less gathers the more you go towards the sleeve notches. And now with all of that in place, I can go ahead and sew this in. And now we're ready to put our zipper in and this just works exactly the same as any other zipper. Uh, we're just gonna have like a half lined garment. So it's just gonna get lined until here. So let's flip the lining out of the way. It's sewn into our armhole here, but that's not a big of a deal. And open the zipper. You're gonna find a zipper notch in the skirt. I marked it right here. So we're just gonna put our right sides of the zipper band together with our center back. Up here, as per usual, you wanna check out where the plastic stopper actually ends. So for that, I wanna flip this over like this to just see where I need to place it. We have the fold that we ironed in here. So we want to have the zipper end right at that fold and just pin it in place. And without stretching anything, you're gonna work your way down until you reach the zipper point and that's until where you want to sew. Right here at the waistline, you wanna make sure that your seam allowance points upwards as that's what we need for finishing the waistline in our shell and lining. A 60 centimeter zipper is the perfect length for this dress as it reaches a tiny bit further down than my zipper notch. So it's just gonna hang there with a zipper foot. We're now gonna put the zipper in. So 
So with one side in, you want to close the zipper. And with a needle, you want to mark specific points that you want to match up on the other side. So especially down here, the waistline. I like to also mark the zipper notch down there as it's just easier to have a clean finish for the remaining center back seam. And then on top here, you can also mark where the actual fold line sits. That's what I like to do as well. So it visually sits up here. Let's open it back up and put right sides together of the zipper band on the other side. And especially like the waistline pin, I want to keep in place so that I can perfectly match it up under the sewing machine as well because everything still shifts a tiny bit. Okay, and with that we can also put the other side in. Okay, the zipper is in, so let's close it and see how everything looks. And it seems to match up pretty well. I mean, this is a like a millimeter lower, but that's fine. And we can go ahead and press the seam. So I'm gonna use my Taylor's ham for the upper part, but we're gonna iron that neatly once the lining is in place, which we're gonna do right now. So let's open it back up. And then we want to flip down, first of all, fold the seam allowance the zipper right towards the seam allowance and then flip this down right here. This might get a bit tricky now because the sleeves are already in place, but it still works nevertheless, so don't worry about that. You only wanna stitch towards till this point here, so right here where I put my needle in and the in-between you're just gonna match up. And then with a one-sided foot, you can sew the uh, lining onto the zipper band here. And now that the lining is also fixed in place like this, I want to go ahead and iron the center back with the zipper in flat. And we can go ahead and close the remaining center back seam. I went ahead and overlocked the seam before I put the zipper in. That way I, you know, have everything neat and tidy on the inside, also underneath the zipper. And now I can just put right sides together and close the seam without any problems. And as I said before, obviously you can choose to finish your seams however you want. If you prefer doing French seams or anything else, you can also do like bias binding on your edges here. Just go ahead and match up your hem and then up here you want to also match up, you know, the point where you stop sewing your zipper. This should match up on both sides, that way you get a continuous result once you iron everything open and have everything finished. And you're probably not even going to see the transition from seam to, fin uh, to zipper. Let's go ahead and iron uh, the seam open. And that finishes all of the skirt parts. We still have to finish the waist seam, so that's what we're going to do next and that will be also the last thing that we're gonna do for this dress before it is finished. And with ironing I always like to kind of hide the zipper, especially if you have a color that doesn't perfectly match, like I only had like this darker green color, so that's why I like to kind of fold the fabric right on top there to hide the zipper and the transition to the seam down here worked out pretty pretty well, so I'm just gonna leave it like that, let it cool down, and then we're gonna do the waist seam. So for finishing the waistline, there are, it's not really a waistline, by the way, it's the under bust seam, I keep calling it waistline, but you know what I'm talking about. To finish the last raw seam that we have, uh, we have a couple of options again. I was thinking about doing a bias binding, but I guess that would just be too thick because it's gonna lay like right here and like close to your body. It's gonna be skin tight basically. If you don't wanna add another four layers of fabric to this, so I'm not gonna do that. You can always hand sew this iron all of the seam allowances up, like towards the inside, and then just hand stitch this close so that you have the bestest of finishes on the inside that you can possibly get, which is like the neatest finish. I, no, I'm not gonna do that because honestly, I don't think it's worth the effort for me personally. 
and I really don't care. <laughs> so I'm just gonna overlock it and sew it up, like top stitch it. I will top stitch the under bust seam anyways. That's what I did for the purple one as well and it worked. So that's what I'm gonna do for this one here too. And it finishes all the edges. So I'm just gonna overlock over here, have a nice overlocked and finished edges and then just fold it upwards, top stitch it at five millimeters and call it a day. Okay, so after I was done with the dress, I put it on my dress form and decided that I want to add these kind of like ruffles to the back and the front. So you can see me here just pinning the hem like 10 centimeters above the hem, just pinning it upwards to have like these really nice folds that remind me kind of of Princess Belle's dress from Beauty and the Beast. And I think that's like a really cute and nice little touch that just completes the design of the dress. Obviously this is totally optional. If you do not like it, just don't do it. If you like it, you can have a go and just play around a bit with this design. But I, for my part, really, really love it. So that's what I did. <laughs> And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. I am super happy with this project and I'm super happy to be back after that week of holiday break, whatever. <laughs> it's not really a break that I took because I worked on the lilac top anyways and on the apartment. So, you know, a break from YouTube, I guess. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and coming back to my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sunday, so you can keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, go check out my social media, especially my Instagram. Link is down in the description below. I post loads of reels all about my projects and, you know, private things. So if you're interested in that, give it a go and hit follow there. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is to head over to my Etsy store where you can find this pattern as well as so many other patterns like literally every video on my channel has a pattern to go with so go ahead and check that out if you're interested thank you so so much you're directly supporting me and this channel and a huge thank you to my channel members you can get exclusive benefits through the link in the description down below so thank you so much and yeah that's it thanks so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday Bye, guys.